Grace, peace, and mercy. Welcome to Eureka Transformation Live. This is your pastor, Willie Johnson. This time of shutdown and social distancing, we do not want to forget those who are struggling with brain disease and mental health. We don't want to just pray, but we want to support them uh, through communication. And there are also agencies that are coming out and are available that we want to tap into that is coming soon. For instance, No Stigma, where you can text 707070 and possibly get some assistance and help. Also, Cape Hope is doing Operation 1923, supporting housing for homeless expectant mothers. And you can help by sewing $19.23 either weekly or monthly. And you can send that to Cape Hope, P.O. Box 1061, North Cape May, New Jersey, 08204. Or send it to PayPal, www.capehopecares.org. And remember, for you, we are praying. Grace, peace, and mercy to you. This is your pastor, Willie Johnson, coming to you from Transformation Live. We're starting our new series in Power Revelation Moment called By the Numbers. It is a three-point overview of the book of Numbers that outlines for you and I how God operates with his people when he's trying to get them to a person or a place. It's interesting because this story outlines the picture of salvation and sanctification and how he brings his people out of pandemics, how he brings them out of plagues, how he brings them, brings them victory through enemies and adversaries. And so as we take a walk through this word, be encouraged and be blessed. And I believe that you will hear some things I believe that are connected to what you're dealing with and facing with today that you'll find the word to be effective in your life. As we go to the book of Numbers, it tells us then as an example that Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he said that these things were written as an example for you and I, an admonition, if you would. We who are at the end of the last days, he's telling us to take heed of these things that are in the book of Numbers and in the Old Testament that we don't find ourselves to think that if we don't fall, um, that we don't have the possibility of failing or falling. And so it's an admonition to you and I of that we have to continually keep our hearts and our minds stayed on the Lord. The setting is for the book of Numbers is that they're at Mount Sinai in the wilderness. They just received the law from Moses. They just accepted the covenant that God had given to them through Moses. And now they're about to take their journey into the land of promise. And so as we see the overview of the book of Numbers, as I stated earlier, is that we see three points or three uh, separations in the story or the narrative of the book of Numbers. Number one, you see preparation. Number two, you see pessimism. And then number three, you see punishment. Throughout the story through chapter one, all the way to chapter 36, you'll see the outline and the overlay of preparation, pessimism, and punishment. This is valuable for you and I because it's an example of how we are sometime in our world today and in our lives, that even though we're people of God and that we say we believe, yet we still have a degree of pessimism or unbelief or skepticism uh, concerning what God has said and what God has promised. And so we want to look at those things, be aware of them, use them as an admonition that we can take heed of ourselves so that we don't fall and so that we don't fail. So once again, they're on their journey two years after being delivered from Egypt. They're now in the wilderness at Mount Sinai. And we're finding now that God in preparation is now wanting to develop a place where he can dwell among his people. Chapter 9, the, verse, the, first cha the last chapter in the first section, 915, they just, they, just, um, they just celebrated Passover. 
now as they celebrated Passover and completed Passover, then God shows up in a fiery cloud. The temple has been erected. The temple has been established according to design. And now God shows up in a pillar of fire. And the Bible said that the pillar of fire remained over it all night. And that God was a ever presence of a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And he never left that even though during the journey, God represented as a cloud would lift off the tabernacle and move as a representation that it is time to move to a different location or different place. Those things showed us how to be prepared because we ought to prepare ourselves to move when God moves, to be able to sense God, sense the season that he sent, and then be able to position ourselves where he needs us to be. So preparation is that all the way from chapter one, all the way to chapter nine, God tells Moses and Aaron to prepare a temple or a tabernacle or a tent of tabernacle. Then he prepares the people, which means now he separates the priests. He separates Aaron's sons. He separates uh, the workers in the temple by their course and by their order. So we see in preparation, we see organization and we see sanctification. So God sends Aaron and Moses to prepare a place, prepare the people, and then the power comes. So in a season of preparation, there's always people, places, and then power. God calls people. He calls them and prepares them in a specific place. And then he makes the necessary power available to accomplish his will and his purpose. So as we begin to unfold walking by the numbers, you'll see, first of all, that God is preparing us. He's preparing a people. He's prepared a place. And he's also prepared and made power available. We see it in the Old Testament. We also see it in the New which means you cannot get away from the call that God is calling. It's the will of God that no man be lost, but that they come in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. God loved the world so much in John three sixteen that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So he's calling people. And we want you to understand that he calls them to a prepared place. So it's not always you can just be anywhere. God is a God of prepared places. All through scripture, God always prepares and sends his people to a place. Why? Because a place is usually where he wants to set up, where he wants you to be. Number one, to see if you will obey. And number two, it's because he wants to be a certain place to prepare you for what's coming in your future. So a lot of time, the places he sends you is a vision or pre or a preview of where he's going to send you. So we see now God is calling the priest. He's calling his people. He's setting them in order. He's telling them what they should do, what they should not do. Then he has celebrates Passover, which represents the fact that he's delivered them and that he's rescued them from the hands of their adversary. And then God shows up to a prepare to power being released. And when the people of God see the power of God, they then begin to worship. This is important and valuable for you and I, because once again, it shows us that we now know that congregating and that celebrating together is us being in a prepared place. So we understand then that God, first of all, from chapter one to chapter nine, we want to begin our point by saying, God is a God of preparation. This is valuable because in order to prepare his people, he has to call them. He has to separate them. And then he sends them on a journey. Watch this. It's about God preparing Israel for the journey. Then Israel being presented the opportunity within the journey. And then within that, you see Israel rebel. Are you with me? Then you see the punishment of God, even the grace of God and the mercy of God. 
but yet you begin to see the preparation. And in that, what I want to show us today is, is that in point number one, a census was taken. Chapters one, two, and three, a census was taken. In 2020 now, you know it's a year of the census. Those census are being taken now, marking the people or the men who are of fighting age. Watch this. God is already preparing people or the fighters to be in position for what's going to happen in the future. So he takes a census of the men from 22 years and up who are of fighting age and preparing them to do battle before the almighty God. Once the census is taken, everything's in order. Then he begins to prepare the priest. He begins to prepare the people who will serve and will worship him in the tabernacle. Then after he prepares the people and sets them aside and sanctifies them, then God shows up to empower, to sanctify, and to anoint. As we begin to do this walking by numbers, realize that God is preparing you for something great. He's already called the people. He's preparing those who are anointed and called. Then he will send forth his power to anoint you in your season. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. This is part number one. Hope you'll come back for part number two when we're talking about moving from preparation to pessimism. And we'll see how God works in that. God bless you and see you soon. Praise the Lord, people of God. This is your pastor. So glad you've tuned in across the nation uh, during this COVID-19 consecration. Shout out to Tampa, AC, North Carolina, Chi-Town, and Philly Town, and Cape May County. Let us know that you're enjoying and that you're being blessed uh, by this program. I want you to press like, share the content, and comment. So if this content has really been a blessing to you, I need you to share it. I need you to like it. I need you to make your comment. God bless you. And remember, for you, we are praying.